Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Ukradowski of WeAreChange.org. And in today's video, we are going to give you the latest update on the Yellow Vest movement in France. And to do that, we have Bob with us, joining us all the way from Paris, France. And if you don't know Bob, Bob has been interviewed last week on our channel with an interview that has almost garnered 1 million views with his information. And of course, Bob is not his real name. It's just an anonymous name, mainly because the Yellow Vest movement is kind of a leaderless movement, and also for security reasons, because if you've been watching some of our coverage, it's not the safest situation unfolding right now in Paris, France. Now, Bob, it's been a week since we talked, and there's been so many different developments happening all over Paris, France, but we're coming into the fifth weekend of protests we have some people a part of the yellow vest movement saying that there should be a pause uh, agreeing with the government saying that there should be a pause because of the major attack that happened in Strasbourg we have other people saying no we're definitely going to protest we have other people talking about self-government and obviously a lot of different things that we're hearing from kind of a leaderless movement but how are you seeing things moving into the fifth week of this yellow vest movement and what do you think will unfold this Saturday well um, first I want I just want to come back to make a chronology because people don't have it. It's very interesting to see how these events unfolded. First, when it started, when it became really big, it was on the 17th of November. First, they tried to control the narrative by saying it was all about revolting against gas price or anti-climate thugs uh, coming from the countryside who don't want to save the planet, whatever the narrative was. They were trying to make sure that uh, basically people would uh, not try to advocate this uh, this kind of revolt. And then they saw that it was not really functioning. So then they said it's illegal to demonstrate because there was no, you know, the prefecture in France uh, gives you the right to have a demonstration. And they didn't give us the right to demonstrate. So we went out. That's the, that's what we had to do. And so yeah, go ahead. People went out anyway. So then they said, "Look, all this violence. These are only right-wing activists or black blocs, uh, you know, uh, and all the yellow vests are very, very violent. We have to stop this violence. This is in, in, insane." And so they, you know, 24 a day on BFM TV, but on other news stations, most of them, they were asking for a stop, especially the second time it was really violent. I was there and I filmed some of these events. It was really shocking to see. Uh, and of course, there was some violence. We can't say there was no violence, but it was only in Paris, especially, and especially in certain areas of main cities, but all around the country, Hundreds of thousands of people were gathered in local cities, little streets, little places, and they were not violent. They were asking for non-violence. So this was not really represented at the beginning. And then they said violence is going to be wild. It's going to be ugly. There's going to be a terror attack, whatever. You know, some people were saying that uh, you could lose your life in the streets, whatever. So that's how it basically went out. So fear fear was pushed from the beginning to prevent these things to happen and now guess what people are not scared they want to go back you know there was a poll right now that said that almost 73 percent of the population a week ago wanted to continue today it only lost 11 points that means almost 60 percent of the population that was in the street they want to come back and the reason is very simple. Nothing has changed. The speech of Macron was a total, he was really shitting on us. I mean, you could see he was scared. He was crippled. It was extremely controlled. There were very few emotions that came out of his face. He was playing a persona. You know, you have to know 
he's a good actor. He has been playing theater in his early life. Uh, people were disappointed, totally disappointed. I mean, nothing came out of his speech that responded to the general demands, because we're not just demanding something like the trade unions, like we want this raise, uh, we want this uh, thing, this little thing here. We we don't want to lose this little thing here, there. People are starving. I mean, I'm not saying that all French people are starving. I mean, I mean that some people, you know, at the end of the month, they have to ask for family members for a few cents. And this has not changed. It, it has not changed. Yep, and the, the situation is very real and very desperate for a lot of people there. And that's why we're seeing such a huge movement and, and such a rare situation where people from the left and people from the right and even the moderates all coming together, meeting on the street. And a lot of them, as we documented, were calling for peace. We're the ones trying to calm situations down. We're the ones trying to prevent other people from attacking the police and being... Uh, just calling for for order there um which which again hasn't been really demonstrated in this bigger kind of uh, media coverage that we've been seeing now this week there was a major event in strasbourg that has very conveniently as people were pointing out worked out to the benefit of the government that has been calling on this protest to stop because of uh, security reasons. Now, some protesters are listening, but you're saying only 11% have dropped out for this specific week, which is a very important one. But I think it's it's it, it's very, very uh, important to address here how uh, there have been radical uh, elements and jihadists calling for uh, attacks specifically surrounding this day. And uh, the people who were questioning it uh, these very specific instances, especially on Facebook, have been censored. And if you've been watching our channel, you guys understand as well that our channel has been delisted and censored in a way for even bringing up and documenting uh, the events that were unfolding there um, in in Paris on the ground. Uh, so I wanted to get your take on what's happening in the censorship aspect of it, if there is a major censorship, and what is being talked about by the major kind of TV station there, BF. TV, which you saw in our videos, the protesters literally were lighting a fire underneath, which is the main kind of TV station, the main kind of puppet of the state. It was not on BFM TV because uh, there was only one cameraman on the top roof of this building. But it's a uh, it's a building of publicis, uh, the drugstore publicis. It's a uh, it's another story, but they were revolting against the media. Yes. Now, I want to say, I'm really laughing out right now when I look at this, because if you look at TV, you look at these so-called analysts or experts, they are completely cornered. They don't know what to say or to invent anymore, because they were saying, basically, we should not back down. We should not uh, give these people uh, uh, any any of these answers they are asking for, because uh, it would be against the economy or something like this. You know, it would go against our national interest or whatever. But then, when they realized that Macron was uh, going actually even more into a so-called, so because it's not a social shift or a social turnout, but suddenly they were <laughs> they were caught by surprise. And uh, the only thing they could do is defend Macron and say, yeah, 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 you know, that's what, that's why now we have to stop, you know, the uh, demonstration because he gave you some certain things. He answered to your, to your demands, but it was not, it's not true. What I want to say is that censorship is not really efficient here at the moment uh, in France because somehow they realize that it doesn't work. It doesn't work because it's not the phenomenon they were actually thinking about that happened today. It's something different than what every single analyst or experts, uh, I mean, they never expected. As I said before, they never expected such, such a, a movement.
it's not even a movement. It's something completely chaotic. But we are trying to reach out each other to, to discuss. And we are doing that in the corners of the streets, in certain uh, gatherings, and we're discussing. And some people are from the right, some people are from the left, some people are have never voted of their life because they don't believe in anything. Uh, you really have something which is, people realize their life means something, which was not the case before. Their life has a value. You yeah. have to imagine that uh, people were scared to talk about their situation. Because if you are poor, it's because you're lazy, it's because uh, you're not able to take care of your own life, it's because uh, whatever. And some people just lost their jobs, uh, or they're, they have a job that pays nothing, and every everything around them has been, I mean, the inflation is really high. Um, so now they are talking, and not just talking for themselves, but it, they are talking for the people, which is different. They are talking like with a principle, a certain sense that there's something higher than themselves that there's. You know, it's funny because Macron said, I believe in transcendence. I believe in things that are higher than yourself. Well, he just discovered it with his own, its own people. <laughs> what's it's what's, it's being expressed in France right now is something we barely had in history. We, I don't think we had it before because yes, there has been some revolts like the revolution. It's nothing comparable. You can't compare. To my point of view, what's happening right now, we absolutely have no idea where it will lead. But there's something that cannot be, it's like a Pandora box, you know. Yep, I 100% agree. And to and, answer, yeah, and, yeah, just and, to answer yeah. on this question of the uh, terrorist attack, I, many people would like me to say it was a false flag. Obviously, many people have raised the issue. It's very, it, it's very, uh, how you how would you say, Convenient. difficult to yeah. express mm -hmm. what people have felt at this moment. I don't want to go into the details. I know that false flags exist, it's okay with this. I know it, it, it exists, it has happened in Syria, it's official, it has been officialized by the UN uh, uh, agents who went on, on the ground when they saw that the chemical attack was a stage event and that all the media around the world said it was Assad. And it was not reported afterwards that's for sure. But I won't talk about what's going on in France for a simple reason, which is that there are, we have no elements to say otherwise at the moment. We have no elements to say what happened. It's only at this point speculation. And I know, <laughs> I know that it's very strange because as you said, you know, I mean, these idiots, of ISIS, these <laughs> dumb asses, they didn't attack the uh, the crowd, the huge crowd that happened a few months ago uh, when the football, the, the you know the the events of the football game happened. There was <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people in the streets. They had all the time to maneuver on it, and there was maybe ten times less policemen at the time in the streets than today you know what i mean it's it makes no sense it, uh, yeah it absolutely makes no sense for them calling for an attack when there's most amount of police all over paris i mean we're talking about almost eighty nine thousand uh, officers all over paris and this is where when they decided to publicly announced that they want to do a major attack not during the other stuff but again makes no sense uh but i really liked what you said about not a lot of people seeing this because again this is a big slap uh of reality for macron for the analyst for the elites in a lot of countries with people saying hey my life has value and that's a very important aspect of it and we yeah i mean on this question of the terrorist attack i mean 
you have to realize people are not scared anymore. They went in the streets while people uh, all around TV, the, the networks, I mean, the, the uh, social media, there was a lot of speculation on the level of violence that would happen. And people went in the street, even though the, uh, the message was sent, don't go in the streets, it's going to be violent. They went in the street. You know what I mean? And this terror attack didn't prevent people from saying, we are going to go in the street, because this is our right to go in the streets. And if you say to these guys, if you tell these guys, and, and to me also, and other people around me, if you tell them, well, uh, there was this terrorist attack, you shouldn't go in the street. Well, first of all, you have to imagine some people are on the situation of survival on a monthly basis. So what is their life? What do you think they are scared? You think they are scared about this? If every month they don't know what their life is, uh, if their life is worth it, or if there's a, a, a future for them. You know, it doesn't work on people who have almost lost everything, or are on the way to lose everything, or are seeing some people in their family who have lost everything. You, you can't imagine what happens here. It's uh, it's different than than what the uh, fear mongers uh, expected, I guess. Yep, and that's how they pretty much use to control society. Fear, that emotional uh, kind of uh, outbreak uh, that is the number one controller of societies at large. Uh, Bob, we're actually over our time. We were supposed to do 10 minutes. We're already, at, I believe, like 15 minutes over. No, it's totally fine. We still have two more questions to get into, especially about the demands and the specifics around that, especially about all the uh, kind of misunderstandings from the last video we did and all the comments, which we're going to get into uh, in a second video which of course the link will be in a description below but we're going to end this now uh just temporarily if you want to see more of this interview again go into the description click part two uh so you get the full aspect and understanding of it and i hope you guys appreciated this video and appreciated bob being on the ground uh we're definitely going to be following this situation closely if anything unfolds major we're going to be there on the ground so definitely stay tuned and of course i want to thank everyone for donating and subscribing and being a part of independent media as of course we're being censored and delisted for even reporting on this this is not going to stop our reporting mainly because of you and your support your shares your donations mean the world to us thank you again so much for watching stay tuned for more here on youtube.com forward slash we are change